Okay, so this is the same question that we did before. Uh, we're just going to, now we're going to do the sign test. And we're going to test the same thing. If the depression rating is higher um, amongst those that are taking the active drug than when they're taking the placebo drug. And this time we're going to do it at alpha equal to 0.1. Okay, so the first test, or the first step in, um, in all testing procedures is to go ahead and define your null and alternative hypothesis. So this is we haven't changed um, these from before. So the null and alternative are the same as they were before, which is um, the average depression rating is not affected um, by the active drug, and then also and then the alternative would be that the average um, depression rating is um, is higher when taking the active drug than when taking the placebo. Okay, remember um, higher means um, that the person is happier because this rating is high when you're happy and low when you're sad. Okay, so first now after doing that second step in um, in all hypothesis testing is to come up with your test statistic. So in this case, our test statistic, it's going to be our test statistic. It's going to be this thing called BS, and it's the um, it's the max between the number of number of positive changes and the number of negative changes. Okay, so we need to figure out what are the number of positive and what are the number of negative. Okay, so we um, call this column the difference sign. Okay. Basically, what we do is, is we just look at the data, and then we say between active and placebo, this would be a negative difference. Um, between active, that's also a negative. Okay. So basically, 20.5 minus 15.6. Well, that's a positive number. It doesn't actually matter what the difference is. We just care about what the sign is. Okay, so this one is positive. Oh, well, this one's positive, right? 40 minus 38 is a positive number. Um, this one will also be positive, and this one will be positive. Okay, uh, just double check everything that you, you have it all right. Okay, so n um, plus is the number of positive differences. Okay, so n plus equals, in this case, one, two, three, four, five. And negative is the number of negative differences. One, two, three. Okay, and then BS, that's going to be the max between N plus and N minus. So the max between these two numbers, which is five. Okay, so now you have your test statistic. You're ready to go and look at your table. Okay, this is the table for the sign test. Um, I think that these introduction paragraphs on these tables are very helpful, so I highly encourage you to read that every time you're doing one of these questions. Um, so for, for this test, it says, uh, because the sign test null uh, distribution is discrete, this table provides selected values of the test statistic BS in bold and the corresponding p-values for the non-directional alternative in italics. Directional p-values are found by dividing the number in italics in half. Okay, so it might be good at this point to, to question, wait, do I have a directional alternative or a non-directional alternative? Remember, directional is always going to be, um, you know, you're testing to see if the mean is high or the mean is low. And then non-directional is you're testing if it's equal or not equal to something. Well, in this case, we're testing if the average um, score is getting higher. So we have a directional test. So whatever p-value we find down here, we're going to have to divide it by 2. So um, first thing we need to do is find our row that we're going to be looking at. And um, our row is going to be row 8, where nd equals 8. 
okay? Because ND, this is the number of differences. So be careful. It's not, um, you know, N minus 1. It's not the degrees of freedom. It's the number of differences, ND. In our situation, the number of differences is 8. The observed um, BS, the observed test statistic, was 5. Okay, so 5 is less than, um, you know, 7 or 8, which is provided in this table. Okay, so but a low um, test statistic or a, a low value of BS is, is indicative of a high p-value. High levels or high um, test statistics, BS, have uh, lower p-values. Okay, so we know that with our test statistic being equal to 5, um, the p-value is going to be um, more than 0.07 divided by 2. Remember, we're dividing it by 2 because we have the directional test. So it's more than 0.07 divided by 2. So if I go back to where we were writing, okay, so here we go. P-value is more than um, 0.07 divided by 2. So that is to say that the p-value is more than 0.035. So we have to compare that to the alpha that was defined up top here. So alpha is 0.01 in this test. Okay, remember alpha will always be provided for you. Um, you know, so here we have alpha equal to is greater than 0.01. So we're going our decision based off of, of having a high p-value compared to alpha is always to, to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, you only reject the null hypothesis for uh, low p-values. So if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, uh, we have the same conclusion as we had in the t-test, which is that we don't have evidence to support that the active drug improves the depression rating. So it's nice that we have the same result as the t-test, um, it didn't necessarily have to be that way, though, uh, because remember, this test is different in that we aren't assuming any normality assumption for the, um, for the data. So if the data aren't normally distributed, then uh, this may have been a more appropriate test. And so our results might have been different. Um, if the data are normally distributed, the t-test would have been the more appropriate um, test. So um, even though here we have the same conclusion, it didn't necessarily need to be that way.